Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we'll be configuring the heading indicator. Captain Bob, Captain Bob, he's my best friend and he should be yours too. All of the resources and this code itself is in the GitHub. It's under section two, instruments, heading indicator. All right, we're in a blank Moe flight file and the first thing we're going to do is assign our Arduino components. <laughs> so under Moby flight modules right here, we have our Arduino. We're going to add a few devices. We're going to add two encoders and two buttons. So encoder, button, encoder, button. It autofills the first available pins. And since we used the first available pins, this makes it really easy. So we're going to say the first Ardu encoder, the push, uh, the HDG adjust, it's the little push knob right here. And we can change this detent per cycle later. Uh, if you have a different encoder, it might be a little bit different for you. You can play around with the values to make sure that on every click, the Moby flight clicks. So I think mine is a two detent per cycle, zero, one, one, zero. We'll verify this later and it will be somewhere up here if I get it wrong. Heading adjust left, uh, heading adjust push. This one will be heading autopilot adjust. And this, this one will be heading autopilot push. For this, okay. For this one right here, you push it in and turn it and that's how it works. For this one here, I'm not actually sure if you push it in and turn it or not. Um, I'm going to have it so that you don't. I think that might, I think that's more realistic to the real airplane. But for this heading adjust, we're going to have it only turn on when you push. And we'll show you this later. Heading adjust here, you can put it to your t proper detents per cycle so that they're all happy. And we're going to add another device. This one's going to be a stepper motor. This is for the motor. It auto fills the next available pins. Um, and I actually misread, <laughs> I actually lied to you here. This switch is removed and it's just assigned right here as a pin. So it was auto zero input, none. It goes to pin eight. So it should be up to pin eight. Pin eight is the pin right here. Pin nine, 10, 11, and 12. We'll name this heading wheel. And we're going to use B, uh, 28 BYJ, which is pretty awesome. We might even use the half step mode, which is recommended. Moby Flight just redid their stepper motors. This is the latest beta. So this will look different than the classic Moby Flight. We have our heading wheel stepper, add another device, get this off of 17. Okay. Okay. One sec. By default, it goes like this. I wired mine a little different. Mine, the zero pin is 13. So let me get this one off 13 so I can use 13 and then just count up. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There we go. All right. Now everything should be configured. Let's upload our config with our current configuration. And you'll see already things are trying to move. Do we like that? I'm not sure. There we go. Our heading is moving. When will it stop? It should be stopping. That's kind of concerning. The master of the skies. Let's start out with our heading card. So this is the wheel card, the number card, um, the turny thing with numbers. That's what I'm calling it. But we're going to go in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, and there is a X-Plane file in the description below um, with all of the proper data refs. So you can look through that and configure along if you want. Once we are in here, we can do our magic. Let's start our first row. Heading card. 
and then click edit here and we can find our heading under sim connect for microsoft flight sim 2020 if you're using xplane data refs here uh, just search heading find your right um, heading variable and just go from there but uh, we're going to use microsoft flight sim 2020 here and we're just going to go heading we're going to narrow it down with microsoft and then let's see it is yeah heading indicator it's hard to read all caps uh heading indicator and then this gives us a value between 0 and 360 it reads from microsoft flight simulator and if you don't have any zero mechanisms like if you don't have the whatever they're called if you don't have the hall effect switches installed that's okay uh, you can just head over to the display tab and use a stepper use your stepper heading wheel the display scale um, this is different this is the latest beta moby flight instead of uh, sim to stepper it's uh, right here uh, sim to stepper so that's just basically like how to think about it if you're used to the old version so every time the simulator goes 360 degrees the stepper motor goes a full revolution 200 uh, 2040 um, revolutions and you can change this number if you realize that's a little bit off if you like need it to go just a little bit more every rotation you can like add a few we're gonna just start with that we're also going to enable compass mode and we're going to have the test value 180. Now, if we look at our stepper motor, press test. Yeah, baby. It goes 180 degrees, just like uh, we told it to. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. Now it should work out. You can just zero it right here using this. Click set zero and you're all set. If you click test again, it should go to 180 degrees uh, heading of uh, south. And look at that. It's right where we told it to be. Yes. Manual calibration isn't terrible. Every time you stop the sim, it resets to what it thinks is zero. And that zero can shift over time. But if you're just a casual flyer, it might be OK just to move it every once in a while. This is awesome, but we can't shift it at all without weird things happening so this is what we're going to do we're going to duplicate this row and we're going to on this row reference the row above it uh, we're just going to use a moby flight variable we won't even write to the variable um this we're just going to use this transformation value uh box right here and what we're going to type in this transformation box is um, add a reference, use this hashtag right here, and reference the row we just made, this heading card row. So it will be hashtag, um, and then we're going to add on our error. So our error is 360 minus the heading we read when it's zeroed uh, to the magnet. So magnetic zero, I guess. Um, and the, that heading is 130. It's um, our heading plus our error. And then, uh, oh, we do have to have it displayed. That's why the motor's not moving. Uh, we use type stepper, do the same exact thing we did last time, 360. Uh, here, compass mode enabled, click OK. And now it's pointing to north, a heading of zero. So we have our heading card raw that just reads our heading directly. Um, and I like to keep these separate, especially if I'm creating a file that can work in multiple simulators. Uh, you can just deactivate the like correct heading raw row, like if you add multiple of them. Uh, so we have heading card raw here. It reads a value of 0 to 360. And whatever value we put here is where the simulator will go. So like whatever value is read using dollar sign, that just reads it from this variable. So like say just for tests, we put a value of 50. It should give us a heading of 50. Once we press run, ta-da, it did it. It might seem redundant to have this hashtag referencing the row above it. I'm going to show you why it's 
useful in uh, the next thing we're going to configure, which is the the heading bug. Yeah, it's been a long day, and it's only lunchtime. All right, so we're going to make the heading bug raw right here. Activate it. Oops, <laughs> idea activated it. Um, and now sim connect Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 vendor Microsoft, and we're going to search for um, heading again. For this one, we will use autopilot heading lock dir. <laughs> Future Trevor here, it's actually uh, this <laughs> this one. I, I did it wrong. Here's a screenshot. Okay. Wow, look at <laughs> look at current Trevor being so uh, so um, self-confident that he records a segment for future Trevor <laughs> to intervene so he doesn't have to have future Trevor intervene. My goodness. Okay. That's awesome. Let's go click OK. And we're going to make our heading bug accounting for zero uh, zero and um, heading card Ta-da! so this one we're gonna do the same thing mobile flight variable but this time we not only care about our heading bug raw position so we can account for the little bit of um, error that the um, magnet has we're also going to care about this heading card raw uh, because when if you have your heading card and it's at 360 the heading bug would also be at 360 but if the heading card rotates and wants to stay at 360 then it has to follow the heading bug just put some some stock footage of me flying or whatever I guess it's not stock footage it's custom it's b-roll we're not even going to use this variable we don't care about this variable in fact we're going to delete any reference to it at all we just want an open row so now we're going to add a reference uh to the heading card raw and we're going to use this as a um, hashtag we're also going to reference the heading bug raw we want to know what what position the heading bug is in so we're going to use this as explanation exp exclamation mark i got that wrong in the last video exclamation mark we're also going to add no no more references too many we're going to make a parenthesis exclamation mark and then we're going to add it to the hashtag so this just says um, the heading bug has to be added up to the heading card. We're going to see pretty soon that the gear thing ruined something, and we'll tell you what it is in a second. So, right here, we're going to go minus, and then this is our error for our card. This is, again, the same deal, 360 minus 10. I found this value of 350 because it was 10 degrees left. So it's um, it would point to a 350 degree mark if the north was lined up. So again, this is just the heading bug amount of degrees plus the heading card amount of degrees so that it stays on the same um, axis. And we're subtracting the little bit of error from the bug being in the wrong zero spot. That's what that does. Let's continue. I had my sandwich. It was delicious. Uh, and you'll see that some things here changed. I added on an X plane for both of these events and a test for the uh, card. The thing right here is you can just toggle one off and one on, and then everything works like it should. Uh, you just need to have one value, and then wherever I read it, instead of just having one reference, I have three references, all using the same symbol so that it just reads whatever one is activated. You can't activate two at once because I think they average out or something. Uh, so uh, take that with a grain of salt. So under heading bug accounting for zero and heading card, ooh, that was a long mouthful. We have um, our, and I did the same thing here for heading bug raw 
FS2020 and Heading Bug Raw X Plane. Just use an exclamation mark for both of them. Um, so it's the Heading Bug plus the Heading Card minus um, the Error. Disgraceful. And then it just subtracts the error. Should I add it? I don't know. And let's just click run. Okay, so it's pointing to six in X plane. It's pointing to six on my compass. And the bug is completely broken in uh, X plane. So let's fix that. Oh, you fool. You blithering idiot. Let's go to display under the heading bug accounting for zero and use our stepper, our stepper autopilot bug. Last time I did the test for this video, I actually configured it to wheel and had the, the hardest time figuring out why the heading bug wouldn't move, but just configure it to autopilot bug. The display scale is 360 degrees. And then the full revolution is uh, 2040 times our gear ratio, 2.5. Once you build the heading indicator, there's a little gear inside that spins the um, ex the internal gear. And because there's the needle in the middle, it can't be a one-to-one -one gear ratio. It has to be uh, like a little, a little bit more than 2.5. So this little guy has to spin 2.5 times for every time the big circle spins. So that's where I'm getting 240 times 2.5. Copy it down, paste it, 5100. Now we can test our value of 180, uh, just to confirm it works. Stop this. And now confirm it that the 180 tests it. That is 180 degrees, my friends. And if you're just doing everything manually, you can manually zero it right here. But uh, we're not, so yeah. <laughs> Enable compass mode, and let's get this bread. Let's click run again. And it seems to be working. The bug is at north, but when we turn it to some other heading, it turns the wrong way like a complete idiot. Unacceptable. What we need to do about that is we need to go over to, we need to go over, over up, back, back. What we need to do about that is go back to these heading bug raw um, things and apply a little interpolation. Under compare, just go uh, from zero to 360, 360, zero. From 0 to 360 gives us 360 to 0. This basically just swaps the values. So if you have a heading of 90, it would actually be a heading of 360 minus 90, which is 270. Not that I needed to Google that. Make sure it's activated and click OK. OK, now when we press Run and we adjust the knob, It works. Well, uh, we do need to, uh, I think, adjust our value here. It should be adding this instead. So now everything is working quite nicely. Uh, if we go, we can turn the heading and it lines up on the stepper motor. We can even turn this once the <laughs> X-plane unfreezes. And it lines up here, uh, but uh, once we stop it, <laughs> this went more than two rotation. In fact, it went 2.7. What we can do to solve this is we can do a little remainder thing. Uh, this is something I'll redeem myself. Um, because in the previous video, I used IEE -E remainder thing or something like that in the LCD display video. And that requires you to add the re like half the remainder in somewhere else. Uh, some 
A commenter by the name of Camille actually showed me that you can use the percent sign instead of uh, the whole other thing. So we can use, put this all in parentheses here, put percent 360. And now when I click OK, press run, it basically gives me the remainder. So this is like saying 974 minus 360 minus 360, 254. That's the um, remainder of this divided by 360. All right, that's cool. That saves us rotations. Let's do it also to this, uh, this one right here. This just saves us a few rotations. In flight, it doesn't matter, but it does initialize it easier. Divide by 360. And now everything is easy. We'll notice that the bug is slower than the gear. And this is something we just have to deal with, but uh, we can adjust it in software to either speed up the bug or slow down the gear, the wheel. So I'll show you speeding up the bug first and why I don't like it. Let's show you right here under Moby Flight Modules. We're just going to use um, heading autopilot bug here. Use our half step mode. This is faster. Um, default speed 1400, default acceleration 2800. Upload it, upload it, and we're good to go. Now we have to adjust all the parameters under display. So this says um, we're just going to reset this value, reset this value, reset this value, and then multiply this by the gear ratio of 2.5. So 10, 20, 40. 10, 24, 0. Now, if we press test, it, it gets stuck. It does go super fast when it doesn't get stuck. Again, just do this at your own risk because any friction, any resistance that's too powerful for the motor uh, will make that the new, like, it'll shift to the zero. So that is why I used... Uh, let me go undo it. I used the classic, even though it's slower. Um, I, that's a compromise that I'm willing to make. Now we can also slow down this heading card so that they don't get out of sync. Again, you can grease up the wheel, make sure there's no bindings, and you can speed up the motor. This is just slowing down the other motor so that they don't get out of sync. Here the max speed is 46.7 and <clears throat> We can just divide this by the gear ratio. So instead of 467, it should be uh, 186.8. I wonder if it takes decimals. Now, if we cl click OK, yeah, it doesn't take decimals. Let's go 167. Round it up. Click OK, save, and when we press run, make sure compass mode is on. That's something I didn't do. And now, when we click run, these move together. That's awesome. They move at the exact same time. Of course, if you don't want to slow it down, you don't have to. Something really cool about Flight Sim is like how much is enough. Theoretically, on your airspeed indicator, you could go from zero to 200 if you like, if that physically could happen. Your instrument could go from zero to 200, but uh, in the simulator, the motor has a defined speed limit. So you're like, okay, how fast is fast enough? So that's just something that's always interesting to me. Now we have everything working with the motors. Let's go over to input configs. And we're going to do this all in explain because Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 isn't actually running. So that's great. Thank you. Um, let's start with our heading adjust go over to input use our module first arduino or whatever you call it heading adjust and on left we're going to have an x plane for heading i'm going to search up dg that's directional gyro uh, and directional gyro uh, sync down should be on left copy it paste 
on the right, it should be sync up. Sweet. I used this data ref tool. Uh, you can download it. There's a GitHub. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, and it really works well if you're looking for X plane things. Now, if we click run, Okay, I do think I actually used the wrong uh, detents per cycle. I think mine is this one. Um, this one. This would be a lot smoother if my explain wasn't constantly freezing. Uh, I don't know why it does this. I think it's my computer. But you can see that that actually does affect the um, compass heading. So that's how you align it. Let's do the next one. Let's do our, uh, our heading. Autopilot adjust. Sweet. Now, under module, select first joy, heading, autopilot adjust. On left, use X-Plane, uh, Autopilot, let's try that, look for heading, heading down, probably. Copy that, paste it, and heading up is next. Click OK, save it, I don't know why I save, yeah, you, it's increasingly my videos are just me complaining about me having to be either write something worth reading or do something worth writing all right let's press run and test if our autopilot value works whenever the simulator isn't freezing it works um, just so you know this is an artifact of my computer it should not be f um, yours should not be freezing this much college graphics card college graphics card so this push function makes it so that you don't inadvertently like roll your sleeve against the knob and fly to the Bahamas instead of Indianapolis uh, so we can simulate this using a precondition. To activate the precondition, we need to make a new row, activate it, it pre-activates, but I like to unactivate it and reactivate it sometimes just out of random habit. <laughs> but uh, click heading, adjust, uh, dg, uh, push status. As you can tell, I'm great at naming things like my rock child, Jamermo. And my stick, sticky. True story, I found it yesterday on my walk. Okay, click edit, go to input, module, first Arduino, your Arduino. It won't be named that. I don't know why it's named first Arduino. That's besides the point. Heading, adjust, push. And then we're going to write to a variable. So on press, we will set um, ad, adjust. Just status HDG. On push, it'll be set to one. Copy this and paste it so that on release, it has a value of zero. Now, uh, just use this heading adjust here, heading adjust, and make a precondition under precondition that just says, uh, and use type Moby flight variable. This says that whenever you press the button down, I want to be able to turn it. But if I, if I don't press the button down, don't turn it. It's simple. It's kind of like the altimeter motifs panel right here. Um, and this is a good like uh, flight sim solution if you don't want to build my <laughs> engines and crap. Uh, <laughs> but you push it down and it only works when you push it down. Um, so that's kind of like the aviation function of the rotary encoder. We can replicate this here if you use my var adjust status heading and this will only run if adjust status setting is one or pushed we just made it so that this row only runs when you push the button down and turn it so now if we click ok press run again oh no nothing is happening ah! <laughs> then we push it down 
and we can rotate it. Ta-da! What a great thing. I don't think the heading actually has this function, so we can you can set that to whatever you want. In my case, I have two ideas for it. Heading push for zero, uh, zero, zero, <laughs> and that'll just be under input module first Arduino, you know, like we've done a thousand times. Heading autopilot push, and this will say explain um, heading, and it will use the uh, the heading we used earlier, and it'll actually write to it. So. Um, it was one of these headings. You can show preset code if you're not sure about it. And yeah, it is this heading. Uh, sim cockpit autopilot heading. So heading there, sim autopilot heading. I think these are the, the same thing. But now under this command dropdown, we'll say data ref. And instead of just triggering this, like we're going to say, hey, this is the value you need to be right now. We're going to set it to a value of zero. All right. Let's go. Now it's running and the heading value is 15. We press this button. And we, when we press it, it goes to north. So that's just a fun little reset feature. Uh, you could even implement this on the push button right here. Uh, and that might be a better use of your push if you don't care about it. Let's see, um, HDG uh, push uh, adjust reset. And like this is cool for like a casual simmer because if your heading is off, you don't want to have to land and find a cardinal rose or whatever, or like decipher this old mess with the freaking writing in like cursive. Ugh. Heading adjust push, action type, explain, uh, find it. <laughs> heading DG drift vacuum degrees. So this is the amount of drift that we have. We can show preset code and set it as a data ref and click zero. So now uh, we click this button. And it resets our drift. So if we, and I'm going to, um, remove this precondition temporarily so that these don't uh, fight each other. So now the press function, you don't need to press it down and turn. You just press it and it resets or turn it and it adjusts. So now if we press run, we're at our headings and oh no, I accidentally bumped the knob. That's terrible news. Go over here, great. Oh no, I also bumped this knob. This is a very bumpy knob day for me. I can press this one. And it resets me to my actual heading, which I'll be able to show you in a second, of like two or whatever. And then it'll also reset this little tiny um, disaster here is because I'm referencing magnetic instead of true, or true instead of magnetic. So just make sure you're using the right directional. Um, you might have to subtract magnetic um, variation if you can. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is driving me insane. And my project would look so cool if it didn't freeze. <laughs> uh, well, I will figure it out later. Oh, explain is in my slow hard drive because I don't have enough space on my fast hard drive. So I need to buy another fast hard drive and another other thing. Okay. As you can see, uh, the heading indicator lines up with the heading indicator on the simulator. And it even freezes when the simulator freezes. <laughs> We're working on it. I would like to say thank you so much to Altimeter Motives. They make these flat screen uh, instrument overlays. They've been a huge supporter of the channel throughout the years. I'd also like to say thank you to all the patrons, contributors, and donors. 
including Bromi, Chris, David, Easy Drew, Gerald Cooper, Juan Fortis, Covenator, Russell, and Yamil. Thank you all so much for your support. It really takes a lot of trials and errors um, to get things just right. I think I've made about three or four separate versions of this heading indicator. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a fantabulous rest of your day. Have a good one. Also, stay spicy.